hello and welcome to the garden. Well, it's been a bit of a miserable day here this morning, raining on and off. However, I am thinking about the summer and that means strawberries. So we're rearranging our strawberry plants this season for a couple of reasons. First of all, we had strawberries in two of our cold frames and they're, they're great in the cold frames. Cold frames are a good place to put an early variety of strawberry. You're going to get a nice early crop. They're, they'll enjoy the warm environment in there in the spring. But there's not a huge amount of space around our cold frames to get in and about. Netting them is a bit of a faff, so it's a bit of a pain to have them in the frame. So that, that's one problem. The other problem is that the two varieties that ended up in the frames, I have no idea what they are, but they're not what we ordered and they are absolutely awful. I mean, how bad does a strawberry have to be before you don't even want to eat it. I don't know, I don't know what that, one of them in particular, I don't know what it is, but it's foul. And neither of them are the garagettes that I ordered. So that's a little bit naughty, but that's twice I've had the wrong variety. And for that reason, we're, we're scrapping those anyway. So we thought we'd take up a couple of the main beds here and, and fill those with strawberry plants this year instead. The other place we had lots of strawberries last year was in pots. Um, I planted them in fairly big pots. I can't remember whether they were four or five litres, but I mean, a really good sized pot for a strawberry. It looks, it looks like they're too big for a strawberry. You, know, you could get away with something smaller, but, but actually um, last winter, I knocked them out of the pots and the pots were jammed full of root. And if you give them the chance, strawberries can produce a remarkably large root system, bigger than you might imagine. So I'm, I'm very happy that I put them in good sized pots. It meant that they would be happy in there with a nice rich compost without lots of liquid feed. And I, I like to avoid liquid feeds if I can. They produced really well. That was their second season last summer and decided that we probably wouldn't give them a third season in, in those pots. So we would either take runners off of them and start new pots or, or then abandon those pots entirely and get some in the ground. And that's what we're going to do. Now, while they were fruiting, I marked which of those plants was giving me the best fruit for size and flavor and quality, productivity and so on. So I, I assessed them and, and I picked out, I think half a dozen that were giving me a really great crop and I marked those and those are the ones that I've kept the runners from. Don't want to keep runners from a plant that's not doing very well because you're just going to reproduce that poor performance. So. That variety, I think, is Cambridge Favourite. No, not Cambridge Favourite, idiot. Um, Malling Centenary. I don't know what's wrong with my brain today. Um, Malling Centenary, very nice strawberry, quite firm. I mean, that's probably why the commercial growers like that one. Um, but nonetheless, nice sized fruit, good colour, Decent flavour. I like it quite a lot. That is a, that is a pretty good strawberry. Um, now, I have been trying to get hold of these garagettes and, and okay, those two frames definitely didn't have garagettes. The fruit was nothing like it. But I did manage to get half a dozen runty little plants that are garagettes. So uh, it was funny actually, someone saw one of my previous videos and, and um, sent me an email saying that RV Roger had some garagettes and, and I'd already checked there. I checked their list of bare root plants because I bought quite a few fruit trees and bushes and all sorts from, from them. And I thought if they've got it, then it's very likely to be the real deal, but it wasn't listed. However, buried somewhere else on the site, <laughs> there was a listing for these little pot grown specimens tiny little square pots so uh, 
I wasn't that bothered about the plants. They, they were healthy enough, perfectly fine, but I'd much rather have had bare root runners that they'll establish better and, you know, they're sort of pot bound in the little pots. But I planted them up. They gave just a, a tiny little crop, enough to see that they are the correct variety, or at least I'm, I'm pretty confident that they are. So that was great. But the one thing they did do is produce a ton of runners. And I'll show you what I've done with those plants. I did, I did it slightly differently with the ones in the pots and these little garagettes. But I'll, I'll show you the plants and what we're going to use to repopulate these beds. So here I've got some of the potted specimens. You can see they've, they've turned into quite a, a clump here. And These, I think, are, are best discarded now, but what I did was just um, empty the best pots into the ground here, dug a little hole, dropped them in, didn't do anything else, no fancy preparation, just dropped them in the ground. And that was so that I could peg down the runners that have come from there. So that's the first and there's the second on that one. And I've got lots of these runners, tons of them and many of them are looking quite nice. There's young, young leaves coming up in the center. Now I could have moved these, I suppose I could have moved them a month ago for sure, but the weather hasn't been particularly nice, but I definitely need to get these moved now so they can get established in their new place. But that's what we did with the old potted ones, just drop them in the ground and peg down the runners. Now you can peg these down, I just used little bits of, this is plastic coated wire, bent over in a, in a loop and then pinned down so that the, the young runner was held against the soil there and that's it, lots of new plants. You can peg these down into little pots or any, anything, anything where they can touch the soil and away they go. In the fruit cage here, I've got some of this woven membrane underneath, so I didn't have soil I could peg the plants into. So here's one of the originals, and actually it's looking mighty fine. That's a robust crown now. It was a bit, well, there was nothing wrong with it, but it, I think the root system was a little bit bound up in the small pots and wasn't looking that impressive, but it's looking really robust now and it sent out a ton of runners. So I just filled some trays with compost and again, I pegged the, pegged the runners down and these runners are looking really great. I mean, that's a, that's a beautiful, robust plant. Again, there's a lot of new growth. Dear, oh dear, there's even some, there's even some flowers on that. Actually, that's not a flower, that's a fruit already. Okay. This is an early variety, but I should have done this uh, before all this new growth appeared. So it's a little bit naughty, but hopefully I'll be able to get plenty of runners out of these. And they do look, they do look pretty good, good, strong plants. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. That seems to have worked out fine. Right, so these beds have been weeded and all I need to do is get in a little bit of organic matter. I've got some well rotted horse compost. I use lots of that here. And if you've got a safe source of it, so without, without any of the persistent weed killers in that can cause problems, if you've got a safe source of it, horse compost is pretty fantastic. So it's well rotted. I don't need too much. There's plenty of organic matter in the soil here from the last time I spread some and I will work a little bit of that in. I, very often I just spread it on the top and, and leave it, but for these plants, I'm gonna work that in just into the top few inches of soil there. I'm also gonna sprinkle a little bit of fish blood and bone, but that's it, fairly simple prep. I don't need too much of the horse compost, but a little bit is gonna help improve this bed because these plants will sit here then probably for three years before I then take more runners from them and start fresh somewhere else.
You can see how dark and lovely this stuff is. So now some fish blood and bone. And then I just want to work that into the top a couple of inches. I don't want to really turn the soil over, it's not good for the soil, or me, but I don't really want a load of manure sat on the surface for these plants. Well, that's it. I'm going to do this over two beds and then I can liberate a few of those runners and see what the roots are like get them planted. I want to get the trowel down under this nicely because I don't know how big the root system will be. Let's have a little look. Oh, it's quite a lot of fibrous root here. And it's not being constrained by a pot so and they're not very deep rooted but I mean they'll go down about that far in a pot but because it's not been, hello worm, because it's not been constrained in a pot, they've spread out nicely. Um, very often when you get the runners, they're kind of hanging down, quite narrow. But I'll just pick off this old junk and, yeah, maybe that old leaf. Oh, that's a nice little plant. Nice strong crown. I like that. Let's have a look. That one looks mighty fine. Yeah, there's a lot of root on these. Judging by the way the ground is heaving. Oh. I've got two together here. To tease that apart gently. The other one's a lot smaller. I'll leave that one for now. I mean, it'd be, it'd be okay if I need to use it, but pop him back in. I'll take the best specimens to start with. Yeah, I mean, these are looking pretty good. Just need a quick tidy up. There's the peg. Yeah, I think I've got two. It did look like there was a runner coming off of both of those. So let me see if I can tease them apart. Very gently. I mean, it's probably help if I wash the roots off. But, oh, there we go. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a really nice bit of root on that. Yeah, I'm very happy with these. They look pretty good. Right, let me go and get those in the ground. Lovely. Now, I've got the tape measure out because I don't want to make a mess of this. And I mean, these beds, I think, what have we got here? Um, nearly, nearly eight foot long, not quite. Oh, I think overall these are just over 14 feet in length, split in half, and they're nearly four feet across, but that's from the outside of the timber. So I think I'm gonna get one, two, three, four, five, six, six uh, along the row. And I could put four across, but it's really much better if I give them a decent amount of space. They really don't wanna be closer than, not closer than 12 inches, really. Um, if you leave the runners on, they will soon turn into a complete carpet, but you get better fruit if they've got a bit of space around them. So 
I think I will make sure that they're a good 12 inches apart. So that's where I'm going to start the first ones. And then let's... I mean, it's not, it's not important, but why not get them laid out reasonably accurately? And I want to spread that root system out nicely. I don't want it scrunched up in there. Uh, yeah, that's about right. Now it is important to set that at the right height. And that's about, that's about it. Because we fluffed up the top of this soil, next time we get some rain it will probably settle just a little bit. And I will water these in. Yeah, that's probably right. So on the crown there, you really want to get it so that the, the soil is at about that level. You don't want to bury too much of the crown. It's not good for it, nor do you want it sticking up with the top of the roots out of the soil. So you can sort of see the level of the roots there. Just bury it nicely with the, the crown above, but all of that root mass underneath it's quite important to set them at the right the right height too pointing out too much it's not good for them but also too deep crown might rot or they're just not going to be happy but yeah in the ground about like that they're going to be perfect right on with the next ones Now, there's plenty of moisture in the soil, but as always when planting something like this, I will give these a good water in a minute to settle those roots in. I mean, okay, you can you can press them in. I don't like I don't like putting too much pressure on on the root system here. I don't like that really. Except with brassicas, they hate having root disturbance, so it's good with those to really push them in but with this sort of plant and, and anything else I much prefer to do it just by giving it a good soak that washes the soil down around the roots settles them in a treat the other thing is you don't you don't want to let these get too dry even today because the weather's so weird the sun has popped out you don't you don't want a pile of these sat on the surface with the roots drying out and I will just dig these a few at a time, but if you wanted to dig them all in one go, you can wrap them in some damp newspaper or something like that. Keep the sun off them, keep them moist, keep these roots nice and happy. But anyway, these, <laughs> these are great looking crowns, so even though I could have done this job a little bit sooner, I'm hoping that they're going to get established here quite happily. So here I've got a tray of these Garraget runners and they're all tied together of course. It's a bit of a mess in here. Let's see. Now there's a mat of root. There's no nice way to do this. I'm just have to get in there and Butcher it a little bit. Well, there's the there's the clip. Let's just pull these off. There's certainly a lot of root there, and that is a pretty robust crown from a runner. So I think this method has worked pretty well. It's probably not ideal that they're all in the packed in the tray here together, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I won't disturb it too much more. I'll take out a good size hole, drop that whole thing in, and I'll pick over this and take the best of them. But actually, they all look pretty robust. That's another great one. 
that's pretty good that's a bit weaker but I will pick the best ones obviously and and get this bed filled So one thing I found interesting is the difference between these varieties. So, so here we've got Malling Centenary, quite dark leaves, but quite a squat plant, at least at the moment. Now the crowns are good and they had a good root system on all of those. Uh, but over here we've got the Garagets, slightly paler green, but they're much bigger and they're also quite perky, really robust crowns. Um, I mean that's a really good looking crown. Yeah, I mean these these are these are great, and the root systems on these were immense. Now I forget where it was, but somewhere I was reading about the Garagets a, a long time ago, but it, it, something that stuck in my mind, and this was after we'd already grown them for some time, and and I remember when I first planted them, I had some runners, obviously not from the scallywags I tried to buy them from more recently, but somewhere I had proper runners of Garagets when they were still more widely available. And uh, those runners were fantastic, really long roots and a lot of them. Best runners I've ever seen. And I'd read somewhere, um, oh the Garagette, of course, it, it, it's renowned for its flavour and, and that's why we grow it regardless of productivity or anything like that. And I, I don't think I'm going to compare the productivity of the Garagette with a modern variety, but with strawberries, I, for a lot of things I grow old varieties, but with strawberries of course I grow fairly modern varieties. Malang Centenary is a modern sort and it's used commercially. So strawberries the the old varieties that i would ordinarily be interesting in they they they're long gone um viruses wiped out all the if you, you go and open a book from the i don't know the late 1800s say or mid 1800s and look through all the strawberry varieties and the descriptions i would love to taste some of those old sorts but but they are long gone so i have grown plenty of modern varieties and I've got one here that I am growing and I'm not I'm not going to compare the productivity between the two because I'm I'm not I'm not sure now how that Garagette would compare with something like Malling Centenary but it's plenty productive for a garden variety but what was interesting was that that place where I, I was reading about it said oh the flavor flavor is great and, and it's a nice nice old strawberry but they said it's a bit weak compared with modern varieties. And to be honest, it's complete nonsense. I've never grown a strawberry that is as robust as the Garagette. The root system is far better than any other variety I've come across. I don't have exhaustive experience, of course, of strawberry varieties, but I haven't seen anything even close to how robust the Garagets were. And it, it was pretty obvious just lifting up these, these runners. Um, I mean, they've all got great root systems on, but those that were in the, in the bed, they've got the, the best opportunity to, to develop unhindered. Whereas packed into the, the trays there, there's a limit to the depth and the, the, the volume of soil that's available for each one of those runners and they're competing for it, they really are wedged in there but even then those from the dodgy old compost in the trays the garagets had far better roots than the malling centenary and then if you look at the plants one thing i really like about the garaget it's 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 very upright and and perky it is a perky chappy and it holds the fruit very nicely and the, you just look at them and the plants are really robust 
they're, they're, they're much better developed at this point than the Maling Centenary. Now, I, I know the Maling Centenary is going to perform really well because it did perform well for us last year. And these runners are from the best performing specimen. So I don't know, but I, I thought it was funny to read that, that somebody thought that these were some kind of weak old plant and they're, they're really not. They are a healthy, robust plant with a fantastic root system. And I really do like that growth habit. It's, it's very upright. It's dead handy for planting in a bed like this. Uh, anyway, enough waffle, I suppose. I shall be, oh no, I can slip in another bit of interesting waffle. <laughs> if you look up the Garraget, it's remarkable how many places will tell you that it's from the 1930s. I wish it was, because I, I like old stuff, but it's not. It's from the 1970s. We know, we know who bred it. We know where it was raised. I have no idea how it got around that it was from the 1930s, but you can, you can find that it's widespread across very many websites and, and it's far more common to read that it's, it's an old variety from the 30s than, than to see anybody get that right. Very strange. Anyway, that really is all of the waffle for today. So thank you ever so much for watching and bye for now. <laughs>